My immediate family always hosted Christmas when I was younger. At the time, we lived on the upper level of a two-family house. My parents owned the house and rented the bottom floor out to multiple tenants throughout the years. Christmas time of 2012, a new tenant had just moved in downstairs. He was a quiet-seeming 30-something-year-old male, and quiet was the kind of tenant my parents were looking for. Unfortunately, a few days into him moving in downstairs, there would be a lot of noises at off hours of the night. Like, for example, the front door would open and shut numerous times throughout the night, and sometimes there would be loud talking, in some instances yelling. My dad went downstairs one night to see what the commotion was, and to ask him to keep the noise down. That was the start of my dad's suspicions about that guy downstairs. Fast forward to Christmas Eve night. We had the whole family over, dining room table stretched out with all 20 seats taken. My uncle Jake is a heavy smoker, so he goes outside to smoke several times throughout the night. After our main course, Uncle Jake went outside for yet another smoke. He mistakenly left his phone on the table, however, and when it rang a few times after he went outside, my dad ordered me to go run his phone to him outside. So I grabbed his flip phone and ran it down the stairs. However, before I went out the front door, I stopped and noticed the back door was open. See, when you walk into the house, there's a little hallway with three doors. One door which led to the downstairs apartment, the front door, and then a hallway that stretched to the back door. The back door was open, so I figured my uncle went out back. The phone was still ringing, so I hurried to the backyard to find my uncle, but he didn't seem to be back there. Just when I was about to give up, I heard someone in the shed, and the shed door was open. I called for my uncle, and someone came out of the shed. It was too dark to see him, but I was pretty sure it was my uncle. He started walking over to me fast, at first I assumed because he wanted to answer his phone in time, but when he got close enough to the lights from inside of the house, I could see his face. It wasn't my uncle, but rather the tenant from downstairs. For some reason, the way he was approaching me I found intimidating, so I turned and ran for the door. I slammed it in that man's face and went to the front yard, where I found my uncle Jake smoking. I stood by him and told him about the downstairs tenant and how he seemingly just charged at me. My uncle is the kind of guy to not really take things I say seriously, or he's just not that kind of person to confront someone. I stayed with him until he finished his smoke because I was uncomfortable. Then we walked back upstairs to the dinner table together, where I told my dad about the tenant in the shed and how he followed me. There was a silence at the table, and my dad seemed a little concerned, but I guess he didn't want to ruin the remainder of our Christmas dinner, so he waited until we were done to check outside. When he came back up, he said the neighbor wouldn't answer his door, but that the shed outside was shut. A couple hours later, the last of our family left, and my immediate family started getting ready for bed. I stayed up in the living room by the fire and tree because I liked the lighting the two gave off. I watched a Christmas movie, and I guess I nodded off at some point while watching it. However, I do remember waking up suddenly from a kind of half-sleep, and hearing a creaking on the stairs. I was too tired to move from my laying position, plus I assumed it was just my mom, dad, or sister. Not to mention our giant Christmas tree blocked my view of the stairs. We had all carpeted floors upstairs, so I couldn't hear whoever it was roaming around. But I heard a door down the hall open, probably my sister going back to bed. By now the fire seemed to be almost dead, and the movie I was watching was over. The clock under the TV read 1 in the morning. I figured I'd just stay on the couch at that point because I was so comfortable. A few minutes later, I heard something rustling by the tree. It sounded like an ornament fell off of it. Someone had definitely walked into it. I flipped on my side and looked at the tree, but it was as still as it always was though. I flipped back on my other side, eyes still open, and saw a man standing over me, bending slightly. Of course, initially my first reaction was to scream. My second reaction was to analyze the face to see if it was my father, and when I realized it wasn't my father, rather the downstairs tenant, I screamed even louder. The man tried to cover my mouth, but at that point I think he realized it was too late. Everyone heard me. He ran for the stairs just as my dad stormed out of his room. My dad chased after him, but he was already driving down the street. I think when he was standing over me, he was making sure I was asleep before robbing the place or something. Fortunately for us, my parents had copies of his ID and other important information, which my parents used to find him and sue him for breaking and entering, and we won the case in a landslide. 
Don't let that take away from the fact that it was still an insanely scary thing to go through. It was Christmas Eve of 2015. I had recently gotten a new job as a psychiatric nurse, but I had to start with the overnight shifts, and that included Christmas Eve night, which was a Thursday. Well, technically it was a Friday by the time I arrived to work. But anyway, most of my shifts are slow and boring, with a lot of sitting around a computer for most of the night, since most of the patients are asleep during the hours that I was there. Occasionally I'd have to check on patients and observe their behavior, or deal with patients who would become restless in the middle of the night. Dealing with so many people with mental disabilities at once was a lot to take in at first, but the Christmas decorations scattered throughout the building brought a little extra cheer to the place. At night, the main lights in the hallways go out and a dim set of lights turn on. These dim lights mixed with the Christmas lights that had been hung up all over the place created a more relaxed, comfortable setting. There was one particular patient who had been creeping me out. Her name was Abatha. She was an old, sickly lady with severe schizophrenia. She oftentimes would mumble to herself incomprehensible things, and sometimes she'd say things out loud that I'd assume were directed at me, but she'd just be talking to herself. It was about 3 in the morning when I went to go check on Abatha, who had been awake the whole night. I came in and asked if she needed anything, and she just looked at me with a horrific smile and laughed. It gave me chills because I felt like I was witnessing something from a scary movie. She looked away from me and started muttering something, I didn't understand most of it, but the words that did pop out to me were, check the bathroom. I asked her to repeat herself, but she didn't acknowledge me. She just turned to her side and rested her head on the pillow. I tried to get her to confirm she wanted me to check the bathroom, but she wouldn't answer now. So I checked the bathroom across from her bed in her room, but as I expected, there was nothing out of the ordinary. I left her room and went back to my desk in the hall. Then I looked at the bathroom door across from my desk. My curiosity got the better of me, so I went into the bathroom, but the lights wouldn't turn on. I stood by the doorway listening for a moment, and I heard breathing and then a click sound from one of the stalls. I went to get the door stopper from behind the desk and wedged it under the bathroom door so that the light from the hall would let me see at least a little bit into the bathroom. I got on my knees and checked under the stalls from a distance. No feet could be seen in either of the stalls, though. One stall of the two had its door shut though. I went up to it and stuck my eye through the crack of the door. It was really dark, but I felt like I could see something at the back of the stall. I got back down on my knees to look under the door, but when I did, I couldn't see what I thought I just saw. I got back up and took one more look through the crack of the door, and there was someone's face right on the other side, peeking through the crack just as I was. I almost fell to the floor in fright, but managed to run to the door and slam it shut. I grabbed the key from the desk and locked the bathroom door. I told another nurse that there was someone in the bathroom, but when we checked together, not only did the lights now work, but the stalls were both open and no one was inside either of them. It was impossible for someone to have left the room. I locked the door. That night, before my shift ended, I tried to question Abatha about what was in the bathroom, but she wouldn't answer me. Just as I gave up and walked to the door with my jacket on, I heard her say, Merry Christmas. I turned and saw her giving me a smile, only the smile didn't give me a good feeling. There was something unsettling about it. I had to turn and leave. I had to work with Abatha for a few more weeks before she was transferred to another center for hospice care. To this day, I still feel there was a connection between Abatha and whatever I saw in that bathroom. It's literally just one of those stories I just can't even try to understand or rationalize, but it still haunts me. Last year for Christmas, I wanted to do something new with my girlfriend. We just got a new apartment together last year and still live in it to this day. It was our first Christmas in the apartment, however, and neither of us had ever cut down our own tree. So I came up with the idea to go cut down our own tree. Luckily, we live in New Hampshire, so spruce trees happen to grow in our state. My girlfriend Tristan and I took a short road trip on a snowy evening to a forest full of spruce trees. 
I chose to go while it was snowing because I felt it made the whole experience more Christmassy. I pulled my pickup truck up into what appeared to be a small opening on the side of the road. It was hard to tell given that there was snow on the ground. I heard gravel crunching under the tires as I pulled off the road. It was a perfect place to leave the truck while Tristan and I went to find a tree. We were in a very hilly part of the state, so we had to do a lot of uphill walking. Unfortunately, my girlfriend was complaining a lot. She didn't seem to find our little field trip to be as fun of an idea as I did. We pressed on uphill through the snow, searching for a small enough spruce tree that could fit in our living room. Most of the trees we were finding were too big. Eventually, we found that perfect one though, just the right size. I gave the tree one good pat and shake before I lifted the axe I was carrying into the air and began chopping away at the trunk. The trunk was relatively skinny, so after a bunch of good hits, the tree toppled over with one good kick. Of course, I wouldn't be carrying it alone, and I'd prefer not to drag it all the way down the hill through the snow, so I asked Tristan to grab the top end while I grabbed the trunk. Then she suddenly complained that she didn't have gloves. There was an extra pair in the car. I didn't realize she didn't bring them, though. I threw her the keys and told her to hurry back to the trunk and get the gloves. She ran off back down the hill and I was left alone standing in the middle of the woods next to the freshly cut tree. Tristan was taking a while so I sat down on the trunk of the tree and observed my surroundings. Pine trees as far as the eyes can see, which wasn't too far anymore considering it was just about dark now. I turned on the flashlight I brought with me to make it easier for Tristan to find me again. Other than the sound of the wind and tiny snowflakes hitting the ground, it was completely silent. It was actually a little creepy sitting out there all alone. Finally, I heard the sound of boots walking in the snow nearby. I called out in a loud yell Tristan's name and waved my flashlight in that direction. The footsteps stopped, however, and there wasn't a response. I thought she must have been trying to sneak up on me, so I figured I'd turn the tables on her. I placed the flashlight on the stump aimed it out into the woods and did the best I could to quietly go hide behind a tree to wait for her to come out. I knelt down behind a big pine tree and heard the footsteps coming closer. Finally, someone came running into the light of the flashlight, and I mean like full-on charging out. But it wasn't my girlfriend. It was some random guy in a coat with a hood covering his head. He stopped and looked down at the flashlight, grabbed it, then turned it off. And now that it was dark again, I could barely see him. Based on the way he charged up to the flashlight like that, I couldn't imagine he meant well. I took one big breath before I started sprinting down the hill back to the car. It made so much noise that I knew he had to have heard it, but I didn't want to turn around and look. When I got about halfway down the hill, I started hearing screams. They were the screams of Tristan shouting out my name in what sounded like a panic. When I got to the bottom of the hill, I started to hear the truck's horn honking. I made it to the truck and jumped into the driver's seat. Tristan was sitting in the car waiting. She screamed at me to drive, but I didn't need to hear it from her to know to do that. As I drove the truck out of that little clearing, we both looked back and saw a man standing where my truck was not even five seconds ago, watching us drive away. It was a long drive home, but by the time we got back to our town, we stopped at a Home Depot and picked up a tree there. Never again will we attempt to cut down our own tree.